people by people and yes. social media especially is just a a way of extending your outreach to people buying people welcome to another episode of making sense of social media my name is Lori Clausen and i am your marketing mentor today i interview luke stillwell his agency is 07 Heaven Marketing, and he has some amazing tidbits for us today, all about social media and lead generation and what it's like for a small business owner to use social media to grow your business and get those clients and customers. Well, welcome, Luke. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to those watching and listening today? Hi, I'm Luke Stillwell. And I run a marketing agency in the UK called 07 Heaven Marketing. Um, I've been doing that for 17 years. And at the moment, we're agnostic with the um, industry, but we're looking uh, to later down the line, sort of niche into uh, law. Well, I'm very curious, where does 07 Heaven Marketing come from? That's got to have some kind of meaning behind it. I'm thinking <laughs> James Bond, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, nothing as glamorous as that. Uh, oh. <laughs> it was, uh, and this is something we get all the time. It's always so difficult to select a name. Um, and to be honest, we, me and my old business partner, we sat down and he went away to come back with some designs. And uh, we've, we've, we've known each other since we were in uh, junior school. Um, so for us, that's like uh, since we were sort of five, six uh, years old. And we played football together for years. And he, uh, I'd always wore the number seven shirt um, to the point where oh. I'd, when I was young, I used to throw a bit of a strop and I didn't get it. Um, <laughs> and probably when I was a little bit older as well. Uh, so that's where the seven came from. And then we added in the heaven just in case we couldn't come up with any ideas for, uh, for the logo. <laughs> and that's basically where it came from. Uh, it's, uh, it's a strange one to think as a, and he's a great, he was, his trade was graphic design. So, and, okay. Um, so, and we've never used, utilized the heaven really, um, in any kind yeah. of taglines or anything. Um, but that's what we started off with and that's what, um, what I've, what I've kept. That's what you ended up with. I like it. That's a great story. And I'm, I'm going to segue right into, um, when it comes to social media for small business owners, actually, let me backtrack just a little bit. So this podcast is intended for that small business owner who needs to do social media and their own marketing all by themselves because they, you know, that's where they are at at the moment in their journey. So my purpose for this podcast is to just give them as much useful information as possible from agency owners such as ourselves. So you've talked a lot about the your the branding of your agency what is your take luke on how the importance of branding and messaging when it comes to promoting yourself and your small business using social media um that's a really good question i think whenever we sort of start the branding process and most people obviously think of the immediately of drawn to the logo um when they're starting their branding journey um which I try and sort of calm people down that it's not the be all and end all. Um, really, my my advice is always with the branding is always to have something that tells people what you do within that. Um, mm. Apple is always the example I use because they just use a picture of an Apple now. But years ago, they mm -hmm. used it was Apple Macintosh computers, and they've just reduced it down so they can reduce it down later on. So that that from from the start, I always find is very important. And then using, uh, picking a color palette that actually works together um, and not using too many colors, we always recommend a maximum of three with a contrast color. So for instance, with us, right. we've got two blues and we use an orange just to draw people's eyes to that. And then as far as the messaging, which I think is infinitely more important to begin with, mm -hmm. um, it's all about understanding what you feel comfortable with because it's all well and good starting off saying, well, I'm going to put a lot of highbrow stuff um, uh, and use a lot of big words and that's who I'm aiming for and that's who my target audience is. But if that's not who you are um, and you're the person doing that, it becomes very yeah. tiring to then have to write something out and then readjust it to suit a different tone that's yourself. And 
Right. I always say, although we've run a marketing, well, originally it was a, a design and web development agency, and then we morphed into a, a marketing agency as more and more businesses asked us, well, we've built our website, what can we do, what could, what else can you do? And we kind of went, oh, well, we probably should be offering some other bits. Yeah. Um, people buy people. And yes. social media, especially, is just a a way of extending your outreach to people buying people. Um, so I think mm -hmm. really just understanding what, what it is that, um, who you are and who you want people that, and what you want to portray, um, but also who's your target audience as well, which I think is something that a lot of people really don't, um, us included, I mean, I, I mentioned within the introduction that we're, we're looking to niche down into law and that's after 17 years and mm -hmm. any, any business book you read, um, any marketing person that's kind of, that's made it, that writes anything, um, that sort of, we use uh, you gurus coaching and that's the first thing yeah. they all say is pick a niche. It makes it easier to talk to that person. So, um, I yeah. think that's, those are the kind of, as far as the messaging goes is people buying people always remember that and, to uh, try and narrow down or just understand who your target person is that you're, you're looking to talk to. I love that so much. Luke, what do you say to the small business owner who's like, they get that concept, but they're just, they're so afraid to put themselves on, out there and like get on video, even make, put a picture of themselves, even when they are, they're the person that other people want to buy, you know, but they're afraid. Yeah. Like, how, what do you tell them? Well, Fear of failure, I think, is is something inherent in all all of us, and it, it takes something to overcome that. Um, so I'm yeah. always very understanding of that. And as someone, I mean, where we do a lot of social media, and and it's something that I struggle with because it's that kind of I don't want to be putting stuff out there that says everything's amazing, everything's going fine with us. Don't worry about it. Come use us because nothing will ever go wrong, and we've never upset a client ever. And um, <laughs> That's not the truth of it. Um, exactly. I've done some um, investment into other businesses, and believe me, even the ones that say that, can, it, it's not true. Uh, so I think to understand really that you're an individual and it's not going to go perfect. <laughs> and I think with all marketing, it, think of it. I mean, I always use the use the uh, analogy of a science experiment, which I think is quite universal. Is that you come up with a theory that you think is going to work, you test it. You review yeah. it and then you plan to change a couple of things to change things. So I, I would expect things not to go, have a plan and expect things not to go right. Um, that's just the way it, the way it is. Um, right. but, but with that fear inside, um, for those that don't want to put themselves, I'd always say the first thing I, I'd recommend is that you can get sort of, so there's some cheap online tools that can get a little caricature or an avatar mm -hmm. of yourself. Um, it wouldn't be what I'd recommend, but if it if that yeah. helps you, helps you in, in a, as a stepping stone to um, allowing you to start getting out there, then uh, that's what I would recommend. And as far as video goes, you're gonna it's like it's like everything. You're gonna get better with time. There's mm -hmm. loads and loads of information out there, and there's loads of loads of examples. So yes, look at yeah. look at the people that you're digesting information from and that you're resonating with and go, right, I'm going to try and do what they're doing. And by starting off doing that, um, you're going to then start by the time you get to a few times, having done it a few times, you're going to start adjusting that to what fits you. Yeah. Um, and then the last bit of advice is just, just do it. Just get, just get started. It's fit for purpose, not perfection that you mm -hmm. need. And, you putting something out there that isn't great is better than you not putting anything out there at all. Exactly. Yeah. I coach a lot of small business owners and just teach them like what button to push and that I often give the same advice, you know, you, and it's, it's just so st statistically sound that those who are able to put themselves out there in a, even vulnerable and transparent nature, not that I would start with that necessarily, but those that mm. are just like really putting themselves out there, they are the most successful marketers and, you know, sometimes influencers on social today. So it's just a proven fact, like, like you started out with people by people. And mm. it's just, it's those people 
that are willing to just show up and be authentically themselves. It's, it's just a, a winning formula. Absolutely. Gone are the days of, I, I mean, I think back to the, I don't know, thirties, forties, fifties, when billboards, you know, buy my stuff because I said so. And everybody did, cause that was what you did back then. Or, you know, you had a magazine ad or whatever. It just doesn't fly like that anymore. Unfortunately, very much so. It's uh, the the power has shifted, and the way I is mm. a, is a way of thinking about it. Like, I mean, I used to do talks in front of groups of business, uh, sort of small business owners, to assist them with mm -hmm. their marketing. And um, now it's all online. I haven't made that adjustment myself yet because of other things we're doing. Uh, but it's it's helping them understand, um, which I think for the younger generation is easier to take on board. Whereas um, those are sort of that have been running business for quite some time or have, have, have started their business a bit later on um, is that the, the, the power is completely in the, in the uh, consumer's hand now, whereas before it would be a case mm. of here's our brochure, this is it, information, and it's all, there's no way to fact check it unless they've got a competitor, so they'd probably look at three competitors, which one do I think is the most honest? Yeah. Is, is how it, it used to be, but now all you do is you open up your phone and you type something in and um, you can find out all the information you want. I mean, I'm not saying there's not misleading information out there, but yeah. And I think that's always a really good piece of advice for people looking to start doing um, the social media and, the, and basing it around content is just to help people. I'm not yeah. saying give away your crown jewels, but give away enough to be able to, to, to help people and to um, be a source of, um, education and information and, and I think of trying to build yourself up as a as an authority. But I think with, right. with businesses and, and Marty, if you've gone into it with the right thing, don't get me wrong, we're all here to make money. Uh, most of us and even the non non profits, they need money to be able to do what they need to do. So Yeah, exactly. But if you can if you can help people and, 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 and you genuinely believe in your product, then then just keep helping people and by the time you you sort of look up from just keep helping people <clears throat> and put your head out the parapet you're you're going to have a, a good amount of followers and more importantly the right amount of followers the, yes exactly the right ones for sure so what is your i know we've touched on it a little bit already but what in terms of creating content um is a strategy that you would recommend in terms of like how much to be posting, where to be posting your social media content. What would you say to someone who's just, let's say they're a local flower shop and they're, you know, they're, they've got the best flowers in town and they are really busy, but we all know that that we still need to market ourselves, even if mm -hmm. we're the best, right? So what, what are maybe some tips on, um, just productivity and managing time and managing imposter syndrome with that content that we're putting out there. Um, I think um, I'll come on to imposter syndrome later because I think that is a big, a big thing, and it's something I felt myself. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I do yeah. too, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a if, if you genuine, if you're coming from a genuine place, I think it's probably those people that feel it because they they don't want to be insincere or misleading mm -hmm. um but as far as for me with the social media i would um if your product's visual um and it's the consumer i would probably look at instagram tiktok are the sort of the, the places i would be spending my time to a, a certain degree pinterest mm -hmm. as well depending on um i think it's it's all horses for courses really it depends from business to business i would <coughs> definitely have a um uh, be active on LinkedIn. Um, each of them have their different algorithms that you're kind of, yeah. and the best is to think, think of it as not playing it. Um, I mean, that comes from sort of the, the search engine optimi optimization thing of what can I do to trick it? Um, uh -huh. Don't think of it in that way. What can I do to work with it? Uh, it's sort of what I would recommend. There's lots of great sources of information out there of how much you should be posting. Mm. But my advice is always, especially for the small business owners, is to set aside a set amount of time, either each week or each month. Think about what you want to post. Have that plan. Do the posts in a set time. So if, you're, if the information out there is changing or 
Um, then weekly, if you've got something where actually the, it doesn't change too much um, on a week to week basis, then plan. my advice is to set aside a day or two half days and come up with a plan, get all the content together and then yeah. carry on running your business. Um, and if anything major comes up or have those ad hoc ones, but at least if you've got them all done and scheduled, you don't have to sit there as a small business owner and go, I've had a, I've had a, I've had a massively busy day and I haven't posted on social media. Small yeah. business owners have enough pressure. Um, exactly. Enough pressure. You, in you don't need people extra. in general, I think. Yeah. <laughs> in today's day and age, right? Yeah. Um, Most definitely. What do you think about AI and and how to use it effectively and in a way that is doesn't feel terrifying? Because <laughs> I know a lot of people are still just like AI is going to take over the world, and I'm like, no, settle down. Like it's going to be okay. But do you have any tips or advice that you can offer, Luke? Well, um, yeah, I'm I um, I'm always very polite to my Alexa, just in case the Skynet thing does happen. So she always gets <laughs> pleases, thank you. So <laughs> If she makes a mistake, that's just an honest mistake. So um, I love that. I think with AI, <laughs> I'm dyslexic, so content creation okay. um, or via text was always a bit difficult for me to overcome. Right. So AI has really helped in that manner. So the way I use AI in how I create content for us um, is that I will write down my thoughts of what I, kind of the general gist of what I want to get. Um, as I, I would probably speak it or as it comes into my mind, say, could you reorder that into something a bit more coherent? Yeah. It will give me something a bit more coherent. And then what I'll do is I'll read through that and then rewrite it. But that helps me give me, it cuts down the, the time I would spend going, right, I've written that down. Let's come back to it now and give it a structure. Um, mm -hmm. I think whenever I, ever I talk to anyone about AI, it's to, not think of it as someone that can just it's it's not an employee that can go off and um just do everything for you i know there's lots yeah. of people building tools out there which are, which is great um and it's definitely something to keep aware of um in any business um yeah, but, but for me personally and I, I, with the search engine optimization and the the social media algorithms and stuff they're clued up to a, a certain level now and they're only going to get um uh, more au fait with being able to detect completely AI written right. information and it doesn't get it right all the time it takes quite a while to build so I've got prompts that I'll use but they're quite specific um, mm -hmm. and they've been built over time so use it as as an employee but an employee that you're using to work with rather than that's working kind of for you that you'll go right can you just do me five blog posts um, about web development please um right it's 2000 words and kind of just let it get on you do need that kind of that conversation and that um collaboration with it to to understand but my advice is don't be scared of it it's yeah there's nothing that we can do as small business owners to affect what's gonna ha what it's gonna where it's exactly. going to go and but yeah. what we can do is utilize a tool that's out there and um i read a um, it was a very good um, video that, on someone that said, if you're not trying to put your own business out of business every day, um, mm. then you're then you're going to be falling behind. And there's also obviously the, the the phrase that if you're standing still in business, then you're falling behind. Mm -hmm. um, whichever one suits you best. But my advice <laughs> is always that is, and it's difficult because running a small business is is you're wearing so many hats. You've got your Oh, finance, crazy. You've got, your, you've got your taxes, no matter where you are in the world, you've got your, your yeah. HR, if you decide that you've got one or two employees, and that's always, and then you've got management, and then you've got yeah. marketing, you've got sales, you've got then you've got your operations, which is really the, with most small business owners, the only reason they got into business for themselves is that they wanted to do, they wanted to do the operation side of thing, but do it better than they, the company they're working for, or get a bit yeah. more money for doing that side of things, not this these million and one extra jobs. So um, I appreciate that, but on the same breath, you can't afford, afford to be falling behind. Um, yeah, absolutely. With, with things like that. I find, yeah, learning how to create good prompts will get you better or, you know, 
exceptional, not exceptional, but maybe better results from, you know, using AI. One of the things that I've started doing with practically every thing I put into either chat GPT or copilot or whatever I'm using is I ask my question or I give my prompt and then I end it with, please ask me any questions you may need before performing this task. And I find that helps clarify things a little bit. So maybe that's a tip that somebody can come away with today. Um, really, really. Yeah. And that's really important. Is, yeah, what you're doing is you're opening up that collaboration conversation, um, which I think is the best way to think of using AI yeah. because it will, and you will come up with, and it is, I don't get me wrong, it's, it's so powerful um, and it will come up with questions yeah. that you thought, oh, I didn't think of that. And, mm -hmm. um, it is, it is, it's, it's a really good collaboration tool. It's always the, the kind of, um, the thing where most small business, small businesses fall down when they get their first employees, it's the delegation, not the abdication. Mm, yes. Yeah. Let's talk lastly today, Luke, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No problem, so one more all. question yeah. for you. Um, let's talk about lead generation when it comes to social media and how can people use their social media posts to get clients, get customers? Is it easy? Is it hard? Is it doable? What's your take on that, Luke? Um, most definitely doable. Um, mm. There's a couple of things that I would probably, depending on the, the product or the service that you're selling with products, but if you've got an e-commerce store, very important. And um, mm. um, you can do the sale can happen on the on online. It can do it can happen without any interaction. And with the service based side of things, um, I would always have it going to the website to a specific uh, landing page that's to do with whatever the topic you're talking about. So, for instance, we have generic landing pages set up for web development and for each of the facets of marketing. So, for instance, you've got social media management, you've got your SEO, blah blah blah. So, first thing I would think about would be who's my target audience. Are they likely to immediately DM me and say yes, or comment on something going, yes, please give me your products, here's all my money? Yeah. Or are they likely to have a bit more of a considered approach? Um, mm. Obviously, it'd be lovely if they were doing that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like door number one. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the one I would pick as well. Um, so I think, firstly, about the journey that they would they take. Um, Asking existing customers what they would do in, in their situation mm. is a really good source of information. And Ooh, that's I don't good. think people survey their existing clients enough. Um, and I would say that's yeah. probably a, a, a really key um, key part of, of any kind of marketing that's if smart. you're already up and running. So once you understood that, I would then always do the 80-20 rule of um, four posts that are sort of kind of they can have a bit of sales in them um but helping people information frequently asked questions those types of things with a way to get in contact but not be informative rather than sort of a sales person and then yeah most definitely have an offer in that that extra one so out of the five one of those is an is an offer something yeah. clear something concise um I mean, we, we do a lot of different services. I mean, we don't push, we do printing, which was something sort of kind of legacy that we still do for a few clients. Oh, wow. Um, we do hosting, but again, we don't really push that because that normally is a byproduct of the website. So think about what is the, what is the firstly, the easiest thing to sell to your clients that's also the least hassle for yourself. Um, mm. As in, if someone, if it was to go crazy and I'm not saying it ever will, um, but you're, what we're aiming for is a steady stream. But if someone's going, yeah. you've got 10 of these jobs, something that you can do yourself that doesn't rely on you having to go, oh no, I've got to go worry about supplier or, or this, if you can. Yeah. And um, think of an offer that's around that and that isn't too pricey, that there's too much of a kind of a, uh, an extended decision-making process. Because once you get those yeses, that's that's what you're after. It's, and also yeah. a chance to prove yourself and because you're an unknown quantity. With the with those with those four other posts, social proof. So if you're already up and running, people that have used your product, uh, reviews, recommendations, Google reviews, it's something that always gets overlooked. And it's one of the things I'll look at right. if I work with yeah. someone is, is I'll go straight to their Google reviews and it's 
Um, one of the business coaches that I used to use uh, used to invite me to um, to speak to these these groups of small business owners uh, around our local area. He mentioned that actually he he purchased one that had a bad review, so he went straight to the bad reviews as we all do. Um, yeah. it's, it's a natural <laughs> thing. So if you see a lot of stars in there and you see it's quite high, but there's a couple of one stars, you'll go look at that. And if someone's responded well to that, then you kind of in fact, you go the other way, you go, well, actually, if something does go wrong, I know that they're going to act upon it. Mm -hmm. um, so some that's social proof, I think, is, is something that is is it's, it's good to throw in there. So frequently ask questions that you get um, and then have always finish off with a kind of standard, not templated so it doesn't move, but something that relevantly reflects what you've posted about, but allows people to get more information if they do want more information. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's always the, the if you're a service based, um, that's always the kind of the best way to go. Um, but then I'd have them go through, I'd have options. The idea is to give you, give them as, as much option as, and to cause as least amount of friction for them getting in contact with you as possible. So have your phone number, have your email address, ask them to DM if they've got anything because they'll be on the, whichever platform you're on, send a comment, send a message or some kind of direct message and have a link on there to a set page that gives more information. So whether it be a blog post or a landing page, and for those that don't understand what landing, landing page is, is, a, is, a, is a page that is just kind of focused on one thing, explaining the benefits of that. If it's the offer that I suggested earlier, benefits of that offer, who it's really going to work for um, and kind of the process of what happens once I say yes to make mm -hmm. people feel sort of safe. And um, yeah, that's as far as the sort of the lead generation advice for small businesses. And that will give you a really yeah. good starting point. But journey, thinking about the journey, asking your existing clients and, and then keeping that 80-20 rule with uh, being informative and educational versus sort of putting offers out there. And don't be sort of hardcore sales, be helpful. Yeah. I feel like a common thread throughout today's chat has been really about having a plan, like just making a plan for yourself, whether it's surrounding your niche or your audience or your content or just your overall, you know, business goals, business growth. It's so important to have something in front of you, like a map. <laughs> for, you know, for how you're going to get to where you want to go. So it's, I think a lot of small business owners, they just kind of start and don't even think about that type of a plan, the marketing plan, essentially. Um, yeah, I, I love that you brought up so many elements of, of the different things that have to happen and need to happen and are, can easily happen. It just takes some, some, planning and practice and more practice and more practice and before long yeah it's things are so possible on the internet that's why i initially fell in love with social media way back when it first started you know 15 years ago whatever is that you know connection and and community make things possible and like you said you know just people people by people so mm -hmm. that's you know, putting yourself out there in that authentic way is, is wonderful. Luke, thank you so much for all these amazing nuggets of, of value today. Why don't you go ahead and tell those watching and listening where they can reach out to you, where they can find you, where they can see more of you. Um, so uh, ask me on, to, on LinkedIn is probably the best place to um, initially reach out. Um, so okay. it's just Luke still one. Our website's 07hm.co.uk, um, which is just a, a lot easier than writing 07 ever marketing um, <laughs> yeah. that for so long. Um, and you're more than welcome to reach out at luke at 07hm.co.uk. I can be of any more help. But our blog is a really good place to start. We really um, have spent Excellent. a lot of time going through that um, to help small businesses, although. Um, it's not our exact target audience. We're, we're always very conscious that I know how daunting it is to start a business or yeah. realize that you've jumped into starting a business with all these different things. And marketing is very scary. It's, mm. um, but with marketing, like with all bits with business, it's, it's just about 
being having that plan, but being organised, working hard, mm. problem solving, um, and just to stick with it. it it's not going to work first time perfectly. Yeah. Just remember that, and don't let it consume you as well. Uh, you've got to still Oof. you've still got to be producing your widgets. Yeah, good one. That's that's an excellent place to end off on. Yeah, don't let it consume you because it can so easily can for sure. Well, thank you again, Luke. I just so appreciate your time. It was really, really great to chat with you today. Thank you so much for having me. What a fantastic interview. Thank you so much, Luke. Definitely go ahead and click on the links down in the description of this podcast episode for his blog and his LinkedIn. If you're looking for deeper connections with other small business owners, consider joining my six-week group coaching program called Marketing Mentor. The next onboarding date is early May. There's a link with more information for you. And if group coaching isn't something you're interested in right now, but need a marketing coach, I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching and would be happy to help you make sense of social media for your business. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.